Propensity score matching is a common technique used to estimate the effects of a treatment or program when you haven't run a randomized controlled experiment. In particular, it's used when you have observational data that includes pre-programmed characteristics that determine whether or not each individual received the treatment. In this video, I will work through a simple example of how it works and give you the basic intuition for the method. I'll also talk briefly about how to assess how well the method works and discuss the method's advantages and disadvantages relative to multiple regression. There are other ways to use propensity scores in estimation of treatment effects, but I'm going to focus on matching in this video. Suppose a non-governmental organization has built health clinics in several villages, and we know that these villages were not chosen randomly, but instead were chosen based on how much the program administrators thought the villages needed a clinic. We want to know how the program affected infant mortality. Here's our data. We observe nine villages, and the T, or treatment variable, is one for the villages that got the new clinics, that's these, and zero for the villages that didn't, that's these. IM rate is the infant mortality rate. That's our outcome of interest, and it's measured in deaths per thousand a year after the clinics went into operation. Now one way to estimate the effects of the program would be to simply compare the average infant mortality rate in the treatment villages to that in the control villages. When we do this, we get this term, which is the average in the treatment villages, and this term, which is the average in the control villages. When we difference them, we get an effect of 4.1. According to this estimate, clinics are increasing infant mortality. Now there's an obvious problem here, since the villages that got the clinics almost certainly had higher infant mortality before the program was implemented. If we had observations of the pre-program infant mortality rates, we could use a difference in difference estimate, comparing changes in infant, the infant mortality rate in the treatment group versus the control group. But suppose in this situation that we don't actually have pre-program measures of the outcome, infant mortality. Instead, suppose we observe the poverty rate and the number of doctors per capita in all the villages before the program was implemented. And suppose that the program administrators decided which villages to implement the program in based on these two variables. Now, take a moment to compare the treatment and control groups using these variables. On average, the treatment groups have much higher poverty rates and a lot fewer doctors per capita. So here's what we're going to do. For each observation in the treatment group, we're going to select a control observation that looks a lot like it based on the background characteristics of the village. That's going to result in a new control group. Then we'll compare the average outcome in the treatment group with the average outcome in the new control group to estimate the effect of the treatment. Let's try doing it by hand. If we only had one pre-existing characteristic to match on, say the poverty rate, this would be pretty easy. The first observation, right here, has a poverty rate of 50%, and that's going to match up with observation six, which also has a 50% poverty rate. And so these two would match each other. The second observation has a poverty rate of 0.6, and that's going to match up with observation five. Okay. The next two treatment observations both match up with the same observation here, treatment observation five, okay? <clears throat> now note that the same control observation, in this case, observation five, can match to multiple treatment observations, and many control observations might not match to any treatment observations. For example, these down here just don't look anything like any of the villages that got the, the, treat, got the new clinic. They're much lower poverty rates, and they have a lot more doctors already per capita. Now, it gets a lot more complicated when we have multiple background characteristics to match on. 
which we do in this case. We have the poverty rate and we have the per capita doctors. Okay, looking again at the first observation, it's not clear whether observation five, which has the same doctors per capita, or observation six, which has the same poverty rate, is a better match. If the administrators cared more about poverty rate when they were deciding where to build clinics, well, observation six would be the better match. And if they cared more about paying attention to per capita doctors that were already there, well, maybe observation five would be a better match. In essence, that's how propensity score matching works. You look at the data to see which variables predict which villages got the treatment, and you pay more attention to the variables that are strong predictors. Now, the way we do that is we estimate a logistic or a probit regression using all of our regression, all of our observations. The dependent variable is one if the village got the treatment and zero otherwise. That's our t variable that we had before. Okay, and our independent variables are all the background characteristics that might influence a selection of the village as a treatment village. Okay, in our example, that's the poverty rates and it's the number of docs per capita. In Stata, it's pretty easy to run that regression. We just say logistic, and then our dependent variable, and then our independent variables. The next thing we do is we use our coefficient estimates to compute a predicted probability of treatment using the background characteristics for every observation, both the treatment observations that ended up getting picked and the control observations. And we're going to call that predicted probability the propensity score. Okay? And that's what you see in this column right here. Now, <clears throat> our logistic model says that a village like observation three, that's this one right here, okay, one with a very high 70% poverty rate and only 0.01 doctors per capita, has a 93% chance of being chosen for the treatment group for a new clinic, but a village like Observation 8, that's this one right here, okay, that one has a much lower poverty rate of 30% and 0.05 doctors per capita. Well, our model says that that's only going to have about a 2.5% or a 2.7% chance of getting a new clinic through the program if we see a a priori if we saw a village that looked like that. So that's not going to make a very good match for anything. Um, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use this propensity score as a summary of the background characteristics weighted by their importance okay, in predicting treatment. And that's what we're going to use for the matching. Okay, so we're going to use these numbers and match to each one, each one of these treatment observations to one control observation, we're going to use the propensity score. Okay, when we do that, what we find is that observation one has a propensity score of 0.41. The closest match to that is observation six with a 0.39. That's observation six. That's our match. These next three observations are all going to match to the same control observation. That's observation five because that's the closest match in terms of the propensity score. Now, note here we're only matching to two individual control observations. In real data, there will hopefully be a lot more unique control observations. Okay, But now that we have this, now that we have our new control group, which is one copy of observation 5 and three copies of observation 6, we can use that new control group to compute the average, we can compute the average infant mortality rate in that new control group and compare it to the average infant mortality rate in the treatment group. These right here are our infant mortality rates for the treatment group, and these right here are our infant mortality rates for the control group. That's the 25, the 19, and the three copies of 25. And now when we compute the treatment effect, we get a much less surprising, shocking, minus seven, so the program is indeed lowering um, the infant mortality rate by seven deaths per thousand. Now, it isn't that surprising when we step back and we notice that our control observations, these control observations that look a lot more like the 
treatment observations in terms of their background characteristics actually have much higher mortality rates than the infant mortality rates in the treatment group. So it's not surprising that we get an estimate that's, that's negative. Okay. Another thing to note here is that what we've estimated is not the average treatment effect, but it's that it's the treatment on the treated. That is, our results are going to generalize to villages that look like the treatment group, not like the overall population. So how do we know how well the matching worked? Ideally, we want the control group to look a lot like the treatment group based on the pre-existing characteristics. But sometimes we don't have very many control group observations that look like the treatment group. In those situations, we shouldn't put much faith in our matching estimates. And there are a few ways we can recognize these situations. First, we can simply compare the distributions of the covariates in the treatment group and the constructed control group, and they should be similar. Second, we can compare distributions of the propensity scores themselves in the treatment group and the new control group. And again, those should be similar as well. And we can compare them either by looking at statistics like the mean and the variance, um, or we can draw um, histograms of the propensity scores or the covariates, or we can even um, estimate non-parametric densities, um, or we can estimate the densities of the, um, for the distribution non-parametrically. Okay, and that's something that you'll see in a lot of papers. The third thing you can do <clears throat> is you can go back and you can look at the overlap of the propensity scores in the treatment group and the original control group. If there isn't much overlap, well, matching is not going to work very well. And if they overlap perfectly, then matching just isn't necessary. You can go ahead and compare average outcomes in the treatment group and the original control group to estimate the treatment effect. Propensity score matching and multiple regression solve very similar problems. They both try to account for differences in underlying characteristics that are correlated with the treatment itself when estimating the effects of the treatment. Okay, that's what happened in our example. We had the villages that got the treatment also had low poverty and fewer doctors, and that in turn had its own effect. Those characteristics had their own effects on infant mortality rates. Now, Matching based on the selection variables is actually very similar to simply, simply running a regression and controlling for these selection variables. That said, there are some important differences. First off, matching isn't as sensitive to the functional form of the covariates. That is, you don't have to worry so much about how you control for covariates. Um, you don't have to worry about as much about including quadratics, cubics, uh, lots of interactions, um, categorizing things, controlling non-parametrically. It's just not as big of an issue. Okay. Second, it's more straightforward to assess how well matching is, is doing at addressing differences in background characteristics in the two groups. Um, there are some really clear ways to just make sure that you have enough overlap, um, that the control group and the treatment group are just are similar enough. Uh, regression, it's a little trickier to get that. Okay. Third, if you have a large number of control observations that are clearly not relevant, okay, that is they'd never be chosen for the treatment, matching is able to just ignore them completely while they might have some influence on the regression results. Fourth, it can be easier to model the process of selection into treatments than it is to explicitly model the determinants of the outcome. That's what you do in a regression model. And then finally, fifth, the intuition behind how matching works can be easier to explain to a less statistically sophisticated audience than a big multiple regression model. On the other hand, sometimes the treatment isn't binary. Okay, that is, there might be different, it may be that different individuals receive different amounts or doses of the treatment. This is easy to handle in a regression model just by including the treatment as a continuous variable in the regression but not as straightforward and not, not so easy in a, in a matching framework. Okay, second, uh, second advantage of using regression is regression models tell you what the effect is of all the all different variables at the same time on the, on the outcome. They don't just give you the effect of the treatment. You get to look at the coefficients for all the other elements that are all the other variables that entered your model. And sometimes those are quite interesting.
It's straightforward in a regression model to include interactions of the treatment with other covariates. Uh, you might want to do this if you think that the treatment effects might differ for different groups and you want to know how that, what those differences might be. That's very straightforward in a, in a regression framework. And finally, there's the fact that there are actually many different ways to actually implement propensity score matching. Uh, some, some methods have you matching more than one control observation to each, um, to each treatment observation, for example. Others have you including many, co many matches for each variable, but weighting them depending on how good a match it is. Okay? And you have to make some somewhat arbitrary decisions along the way, okay? deciding which, which, which way to go. And those decisions sometimes affect your results. Okay. Regression, as long as you agree on the covariates, uh, gives you the same answer every time. Now, perhaps the most important thing to understand about propensity score matching is the big problem that it does not help with. Okay, You may see people use propensity score matching to address problems of omitted variable bias, when they don't observe those potential confounders, well, this is never going to work. Okay, there's nothing magic about regression, or nothing magic about matching that takes care of these unobserved confounders. Okay, to get around that kind of a problem, you need to use a different method, and that might be instrumental variables, it might be regression discontinuity, it might even be difference in difference, but it's not going to be matching. If you want to learn more about estimation methods like matching that use propensity scores, I highly recommend section 3.3 of Angerston Pischke's excellent book, Mostly Harmless Econometrics. Uh, you, and for even more information, you might want to take a look at Gao and Fraser's book on propensity score analysis.